Hey everybody, it's Jesse, and we are here for the Hype Tag How to Play video. Welcome to everyone, and a special shout out to you Kickstarter backers because you made this possible. Hopefully you're sitting there right now with the game in your hands, you've unwrapped it, you've poured over all the like amazing and funny images that Kelly and Megan put together for the game, and now I'm gonna teach you how to actually play. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is just talk about what is the goal of the game. The goal of the game is you're, uh, the people who are playing are a bunch of snarky hipster kids battling it out in a cutthroat game of tag at recess. We, we've all been there, the good, the bad, and the worse. Like we know what that feels like. So everybody is gonna start with a hype meter and that hype meter is gonna measure like your hype on the playground. And in order to win the game, everything you're doing is working towards this goal. You're gonna go up to 10 on your hype meter. That's called getting hyped. And then it will flip over. And then you have to simmer down back to one in order to go back to class. And the cool thing about the hype meter is it's not just a scoring mechanism, it's also a power mechanism. So the more your hype goes up, the more powerful you are. Kind of like the playground. It's like, ah, I'm the king of the world. But in order to go back to class, you gotta chill and then you lose power and you have to try to figure out how to win. So that's the challenge of the game. So let's set up. We're gonna do a two player game. It's the easiest way to teach. And it's also the easiest way to learn because there's just a little less going on. Once you learn the game, get to three and four player, like that's where it's at. But I love two player as well, so we're gonna start there. So everybody starts with a hype meter um, and you put it to the side of your play area. This is, uh, everybody gets a, a kid on the playground that they're playing. This is Oliver. Um, I'm gonna play Zoe. Um, so I'm just gonna put that here. This is a game with two decks of cards that interact with each other, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. There's the tag deck, which is basically these cards right here, and they all say tag in the corner. This is sort of the Uno side of the game. And you're gonna shuffle these cards, I already did that, and you're gonna put them here. And then you have the hype deck, which is more the trading card game aspect of the game. This is kind of the marriage of like magic and Uno, basically. And these cards are a little more complicated, a little more combos, strategy. You're gonna shuffle those and they're gonna go here. And you'll notice these cards all have the same card back. That's so that your opponent doesn't know what's in your hand, silly. So you're gonna have these cards mixed in your hand. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna get dealt five tag cards and two hype cards. I already did that, so here's my hand. Here's my opponent's hand. I'm gonna play, I'm Jesse. I'm gonna play against Jay Howe. He's like a tough player, so we'll get to him in a minute. So we all have our hands. There's also a pile of older kid cards and we don't need those yet. So you're just gonna shuffle them and you're kind of just gonna set them aside. I'm just gonna put them in the box for now because we don't need them. There's also this really fun bonus pack that's wrapped up. I've opened it, but this is a gift for you once you know how to play the game. This is some like extreme strategy, cool stuff that you can do, cards that are a little more complex and you get to open this later and add them into the hype deck. And I wanna tell you Kickstarter backers that your Kickstarter promo, Crowdfunder Fran, is in this package. So in a minute, you'll open that. Or maybe not in a minute, but soon. Okay, and of course, everybody has a little rules card. One side just tells you what to do on your turn and we'll get to the other side in a minute. Hey, Kate. Hey, Jay Howe. Hey, Jesse forgot to tell him that since it's a learning game, we're gonna start on quick mode, which is at number four on the hype meter instead of pro mode. We'll get to varsity later. So put your slider on four. And second of all, all of the four main kids on the hype meters have like a personality trait. Like this guy, he's kind of self-centered. Um, so you're gonna put your trait slider on thumbs up to show that it's available. We'll get back to that in a bit, but I didn't want you to leave that out. Back to Jesse. Thank God that guy's here, jeez. Now, I'm gonna basically talk you through your turn so that you know what the three phases of your turn are. And as I do that, I'm gonna introduce you to some of the unique elements of the game. I find if I know what the things are that are different than other games that I've played, it makes the game sticky or it makes me remember it and it makes, it, makes me wanna play again, right? Okay, so come on over here and I'm gonna show you your play area. So this is your play area. You have your hype meter. We're starting on four, as Jay Howe pointed out. And uh, we basically have the two decks in the middle and they're on these mats so that you know which deck is which. And there's going to be a face-up discard pile next to each of these decks. In your play area, the top area is gonna be where you play tag cards. That's called your field. And you can find this in the rule book. Or your second area is called your sideline and that's where hype cards go. So now let's talk about your turn, okay? The first phase of your turn, if you look at your rules card, is called regroup. And there is no automatic draw in this game because that would be too easy. You don't get to draw a card every turn. Come on, guys. So instead, if you want to draw, you have to discard. So regroup in tag is kind of like, I just got tagged and I'm like, I don't know what to do. So it's kind of a chance to think about your turn. We'll talk more about the strategy of that later. The second part of your turn is called the hype step. And you can play one hype card on your hype step. 
there are three types of hype cards. You know it's a hype card because it says hype, hype, hype in the corner. So I'm gonna just grab one of each of these and I'm gonna show you what they do. A mischief card is one and done. You play it into your sideline on your hype step, you do what the card says, and then you discard it. The second type of card is a character card. And there are helpful ones and harmful ones. Helpful ones you're gonna play on yourself, harmful ones, they're gonna go over there to do bad things to uh, J-Hype. So this is Enrique, for example, and when I play him, I play him into my sideline, but characters stay there instead of getting discarded. And he has an ongoing effect that helps me so long as he's there. And there are effects in the game that will get rid of him, and some that even allow j Howe to steal him away. That's called repositioning. Um, so that's what he does. I'm just going to leave him there just so you know where he belongs. And then there's what's called SAS cards. And SAS cards are part of what make this game fun. They are response cards. They don't count as the one card you can play on your hype step. They can be played anytime on anybody's turn, as long as the thing that they're responding to happens. So for example, monkey see, monkey do, we've all heard that one. This lets me copy a move that was just made on an opponent's hype meter. So if j Howe moves on his hype meter, even if it's his turn, I can be like, monkey see, monkey do, I throw this card down and I get to copy his move, which basically just lets me do the same move. So those are the three types of cards in the hype deck. So on your hype step, you can play one. Both regrouping and hype step, optional. So there are turns where you just skip them and go right to tagging. Okay, Kate, okay, come here. Like you and I both know these hype cards are like the best part of the whole game. I mean, this is where like you clever kids will really get to shine. So what do these hype cards even do? Let me show you a couple cool things about them. First of all, this is so awesome. All these cards have a number in the corner and that number is called a hype number. And you have to be at that number or higher on your hype meter to play the card. So as you go up on your hype meter, you get more powerful. But the trick is when you flip over, right? You're all high and mighty up here. You start to simmer down. Now you're down here. You can't play those powerful cards anymore and you gotta be a little more sneaky, right? So that is one of the cool things about this game. So let me just give you a couple examples of what these cards do. So here's an example, like this card's called Get Riled. And uh, like this card is just a two plus. You can play it almost any time. And you can either move up two if it's early in the game and you're going up, or you can make an opponent move up one if it's later in the game, right? How about saw that coming? This card is a five plus, so you have to be at five. It blocks an opponent's hype card. Any hype card they play, I can be like, saw that coming, ha ha. But check this out. Some of these cards have another number. That's called a hype bonus. If I'm at nine plus, not only do I block the card, I get to put it in my hand. So I get to block it and I'm like, oh, I'll be helping myself to that and whatever cash you got. That's what SAS cards do, man, they're powerful, right? Here's another example. This card, Mood Swing, is a seven plus, but it lets you move up or down three spaces. And if you're at 10, you can move four spaces. Oh, this is so fun, right? And a couple of other examples. These cards let you draw cards, they let you move on the hype meter, they let you force your opponent to move. This is where you start to really get some strategy going. Last thing I'm gonna say is some of these cards are characters, like Mrs. Decree. If I'm at seven plus, I can play her here in my sideline. And as long as she's there, opponents may not play SAS cards on my turn. So she's like, ah, 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 they try to play a SAS card. I'm like, no, Decree says no. And as long as she's there, no SAS cards for you. So that is what the hype deck is all about. So of course it is a game of tag on the playground. So you cannot end your turn unless you tag an opponent. And I'm gonna explain how that works now. This is really fun. So you're gonna need this, it's the target. In a two player game, you're always gonna be tagging the other player. But in three and four player, you actually get to make a choice. And the turn order is not always linear, which is really fun. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna put the target in my opponent's field to show that I am targeting them. Then I'm gonna play a tag card into my field. All right, so let's talk about here. Come on over here and let's talk about the tag deck. All right, there are six different tag cards in the tag deck and there's multiple copies of each one. Um, they all say tag in the corner, so all of these are considered tag cards. And they're all just like funny, sort of somewhat aggressive, different styles of tags that you would do. But the thing to notice is that each one has a primary effect and a pair effect. So every time you play a tag card, you're going to do everything it says in order like this. I play a push, I'm going to draw a card, because that's the first thing that it says to do. So I draw a card, I can pick any type of card to draw. And then if I've completed a pair, I'm going to get the pair effect as well. And all the pair effects are moves on your hype meter. So you kind of want to play towards the pair effect. 
And what's cool about this game is that some of these cards, if you, if you look in close again, some of these cards have pair effects oops, that move you up on the hype meter. Ambush lets you pick. And some of them move you down. And replay is actually a wild that lets you copy the last one that you played to complete a pair. So what's cool is that early in the game, you're trying to play the tag cards that move you up to complete those pairs. But you have to think ahead. I'm gonna play push on one turn. I can only play one tag card per turn. So on my next turn, I'm trying to work it out so that I can play another push. I don't have one, but I do have a replay which copies the last tag card that I played. And I can only copy that top card. So now, if this is a push, it's a copy of push, I'm still gonna draw a card. I always do the primary effect, I would draw a card. And now I get the pair effect and I would move up one on my hype meter because that's what push does. If I were to play another push, that is not a pair anymore. That's starting another potential pair. So an example of tagging, if it's my tag step, I would do this, I would play push, I draw a card, now it's my opponent's turn. If it was my next turn and I was at my tag step, I do this, I could play a replay, which is a copy of push, I draw a card, and now I move up one on my hype meter, which is, remember, that is the goal of the game. Oh my, God, Kate, can you please tell your husband like recess is gonna be over? Can we please just play? Okay, okay, don't be so pushy. I'm just gonna do a little uh, recap and then we'll play the game. All right, so recap. First part of your turn, regroup. You can discard a card from your hand to draw a card from either deck. It's optional. And if you skip it, you cannot go back. So you decide to regroup or you move on. Second phase, hype step. Play one hype card from your hand. It's usually gonna be a mischief card or a character card. And then if you play one, you move on to your tag step. That is also optional, so you can skip your hype step and move right to tagging. Tag step, you're just going to take the target. You're going to target an opponent. In two-player, it's always going to be the same person, but it still helps us keep track of whose turn it is. And then you're going to play a tag card from your hand into your field. And you do the first thing it says. In this case, you're going to draw a card. And then if you completed a pair like that, you're gonna do the first thing it says, in this case, draw a card, and you're gonna get the pair effect. And you always just do things in order. So, that's your turn, now we're gonna play.